All right, another episode of the Art Bros. What up, bros? Hey, bro. Hey. Yo, so this is Mike, Patrick, what up? and Fancy Dave, as always. Hey. And today we are talking about The Crown by Jean-Michel Basquiat. I really hope I said that right. Or we're guess, talking... Okay. Yeah. Like right. Instances where crown, the crown appears a lot in his work, I think. Like, yes. Yeah, because it, it appears a lot. It does. People, they get the tattoo of it. Um, it appears all over hats, uh, shirts, and whatnot. It comes from an era where pop art had kind of been replaced by this uh, graffiti style. Keith Haring and Basquiat, these guys were really big back in the 80s. This is when he was really big. And they kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? They commercialized mm -hmm. art. Yeah. They did. So that's why, like, you nowadays you see The Crown or The Radiant Baby by Keith Haring. You see it all over the place. But I don't really get mad at that because that's kind of what it was intended for. Originally, yeah, to start, it was all graffiti in mm -hmm. a sense. Yeah. It, was all, it was free art. So it was Keith Haring who did graffiti, though, first, right? He was the first guy, and then... Not necessarily. He was just... He, I mean, yeah, he did graffiti. He wasn't one of the first, but he was... It was big back in the early 80s. Okay. Um, he was the first to start making, like, that bank on it. Yeah, he well, he oh, was okay. one of the first to start right. making bank. And the bigger... The graffiti movement really got big in the 70s. Um, with street artists just taking over subways and streets and whatnot. Keith Haring, Basquiat, they were part of that. Um, Herring used to just take abandoned subway ads and paint over them. And you had Basquiat who became, he was part of a tagging crew named Samo. That's right. Yeah. He was. Yeah. yeah. And he, he got discovered and boom, here we are. Years later talking about his work, talking about everyone's work from that era. Uh, so we have the crown. And when we think about a crown, it's symbolic, mm -hmm. you know, um, symbolic interactionism. We think, the power. crown is royalty. Power. Royalty. Burger King. You know, exactly. you got, you got that. You Big know, burger. Got White Castle. Stature. Uh, I don't know. Position. Yep. A whole bunch you of think stuff. Of king. You, you think of that. And it's um, a nice hat. Yeah, it's a, it makes for a nice hat and I a Halloween it. costume. Yeah, I wear it. It does. Basquiat, he's known for putting the crown all over his paintings, all over his work. And he would put it on his quote unquote portraits of his uh, idols. And when I say portraits, I mean. Most of the time, he just wrote like Muhammad Ali and put a crown over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. Like I, I liked that aspect of his work. He would make these portraits that just were like the word, the name of the artist, or like a really crudely drawn version. So could it be considered a signature, or like, or just no? Uh, uh, it was maybe, more like the actually. Radio. I would say it's more like the radio. It was like his icon. It was his okay. logo, maybe. All right. Of sorts. This is what he's known for. Basquiat, and um, when I think of Basquiat, like I mentioned before, I just think of that whole era where um, pop art had just ended and this graffiti style just boomed, took over, and these guys wanted to make a name for themselves. Basquiat specifically, he dropped out of high school and supported himself for a while just selling t-shirts uh, that he made himself mm -hmm. and selling his artwork. It was pretty cool. So, Fancy Dave, like I said, we think of stature, we think of Crown, you know the royalty. What do you think of when you when I say "Hey, Crown Basquiat"? Crown yeah. Basquiat. Uh, I wonder if he's trying to like position himself as you know having gained, you know, uh, I guess a position within the art community itself in that era. That's a good. That's a really good point because this he came from Brooklyn. He mm -hmm. came. He from, was homeless for a while. He was he? came from the streets of Brooklyn, and he really rose to. This high stature. Well, it's it's uh, his name does not sound like a homeless person. No, not at all. Like yeah. Jean Michel or something like, like like that. It's just you know, it, it's it, it's dude. Weird. That's street man. I know. That's, street. That's, yo, that that's street. Is Jean Michel's fuck. coming for your ass, man. <laughs> dude got his money. Dude's got his crown. Oh shit, he's, he's got, got his crown. Shot, yeah. He actually used it's actually brass knuckles and he would stab <laughs> people with it. Yeah. No, but the. He, I am um, the crown. Yeah, I'm sure it's something that he really liked to deal with class struggle. That was one of his big things. Well, like and social commentary, I think. Bam! Right yeah, there. Yeah. Think mm -hmm. of a crown. You think of, you know, the, the responsibility. Maybe he's referring to have the crown as a symbol of how the how the powers that be are responsible for the people under them. You know, and that's why he put the crown on people like Muhammad Ali or jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. He put a Charlie Parker. Those guys. Um, because those are people that uh, they're idols. People look up to them. 
they have this sort of responsibility among themselves to make sure that the people have something good, good role models, especially when you're a kid from Brooklyn. You know, you look at a guy like Muhammad Ali, a black man who made it, you know, through athleticism, um, power of sheer force and will, that's something to look up to. Yeah. I think that's what the crown really <clears throat> represents. Um, and now I think it's, it's kind of funny that Basquiat's painting sell for millions of dollars now. And he was all about supporting the needy and class struggle and whatnot. <clears throat> but, yeah. It's, it's neat, though, how it kind of has this crude principle to it. Uh, you know, it's not, you don't get this idea of finely crafted, like a crown, a, a, a king's crown. It, it has this uh, plainful tone of a kid's drawing, but it's just, when you look at it in its surroundings, it kind of gives this whole, it's, it's, you're not looking at a kid's drawing, you're not looking at some, you know, at just a crown. It's kind of, it really gives insight into what I kind of feel like he was, you know, doing it in, in his paintings and why, like, his uh, beginnings from the, I think it was, like, poet graffitis as well. You know, yeah, so. and, and I think he's questioning, he could be also questioning what our idea of royalty is, you know, because he puts this crown, like I said, he puts it on these idols, but he, you also see some paintings where he puts it on, like, a skull. Mm -hmm. You know, something just dead. by itself, or yeah, or just by itself, too. You know, um, we talk about Byzantine and gold and whatnot, um, how gold represents like sort of religious stature. He has gold crowns, too. I think he's questioning what we worship as well, like as a society. What do we worship? You know, is it simple enough to just put something on like a crown on something and hey, worship it, you know, or is it like you put a crown on a skull? Are we worshiping this skull now? Mm -hmm. You know. I like that. He really questions what us as a society, like, what do we look up to? What do we worship? What are we listening to? Um, what has like worth. Said, exactly, what has worth. You know, especially... And with um, such a crude thing, it's almost asking, uh, does it even have that much worth, really? Or is, you know, the emperor kind of wearing nothing here? <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Because when, it, when it's all said and done, he's just suggesting a crown. You know, it's not a real crown. He's not like... It's almost like he went out of his way to make it like as... It's crude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's primitive. You know, this whole, his whole style is primitive, it's primitivism, you know. It's very simple, it's very, very, it's very complex, but it's also very easily done. But what I think the coolest thing about it is just, you know, how graffiti it is, how, how, how human it is. Yeah. It's so human. Mm -hmm. And that's... Well, his work is human as well. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's that texture and that, there's that brush stroke feelness throughout and were we gonna talk? We were gonna were we gonna touch up on how he died or like what what age he died at? Uh, oh, twenty seven, man. Mm -hmm. Twenty seven. That's a, a lot of famous people die at twenty seven. It's just it's just a curse, I guess. And he died of what? A Heroin drug overdose. Drug overdose. It's kind of interesting. I wonder if he was into that before he was making millions of dollars, and it's kind of like he's he was still continuing to do it. Well, I've I've learned of him as a cautionary tale. I've learned of him as like a kid who came up from the streets, mm -hmm. got big, and kind of just, you know, he, what's the word I'm looking for? He rolled the roulette a couple of times, too, too many. Okay. Yeah, so obviously he, he, this kid from the streets became this big-time artist, partying with celebrities, you know, partying with other big-time artists too, and just became too much, and the lifestyle got him. Yeah. So yeah. it's a cautionary tale as well. You Another 27-year-old. Add that to the list. That is. Mm -hmm. All right. So what are your final thoughts on this? Fancy Dave, do you have any final thoughts on this guy? Um, I think I kind of said my thing with the, uh, you know, the crudeness of it, really. Um, you know, what has worth, you know, what do you attach things to? Um, does it matter, really? Does it matter? Patrick? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I, I, I really don't have anything major else to add on, but I'm kind of curious how he would react to it being so commercial these days. Oh. I think he'd be fine with it. Yeah, do you, like, <laughs> I mean, I wonder if he, he would be happy seeing it being tattooed onto someone's body, you know, because he kind of used it as the signature or to almost crown this type of person like Ali, and here's, uh, I don't know, like some person just getting a tattoo of it on their, on their ribcage. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. That's that, that's just something I can't help but think when I look at commercial uh, yeah. logos like 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 this. That's true. Yeah, it's true. I, like I said, I love how the crown, what it symbolizes. It really makes me question 
like Fancy Dave, doesn't matter what are we worshiping and why not. And I think the crown is a perfect summation of Basquiat's work. Talked about humanity, class struggles and whatnot. And the crown is a perfect hat <laughs> to that, all that. <laughs> Sorry. All right, guys. So um, like us on Facebook if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we would love that. It's and just a click of a button. Just a click. If you don't, if you don't click, or a tap if you're using a smartphone or other such device. Yes, please. So, guys, um, from Mike, Patrick, and Fancy Dave, we will see you next time here on the Art Bros. Mm-hmm. Word out.